Hey guys, why are some Christians out there so happy and they, they seem so peaceful all the time, even while they're experiencing problems in life? Well, on the other hand, there are Christians that just seem to be depressed and they have problems and issues with everything and everyone. And you can clearly see that they're carrying these heavy burdens that are stealing their peace and their joy. They just seem so negative all the time. What is the difference between them? What is the secret to enjoying and having life in all of its fullness and to experience that peace in your heart that surpasses all understanding even in hard times? Well, that's what we're going to look at in this video. Let's get to it. Now just very quick, if it's your first time here on my channel, I'm Daniel and welcome to DLM Christian Lifestyle. Consider subscribing and also clicking that notification bell so you won't miss any of the next videos. Now, how can you be happy all the time as a Christian in this world even while you experience hard times? That is what every human being wants, a life of happiness. But happiness is an emotion, it's a feeling that you have. And feelings change all the time. What you are really looking for, what you really want, is peace. Eternal peace. This deep peace in your spirit that surpasses all understanding, that is there even while you go through difficult times in this life. But here's the thing, that peace is only possible with God, not with money, not with success, not with a career, not with drugs, not with shopping, not with relationships or any other thing this material world can offer you. You will always be hungry for more, thirsty for more, to try and fill that hole inside of you. But Jesus says in John 4 verse 14, But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. Your soul needs to find its rest in God Himself. He is the only one that can give you eternal peace and rest for your soul. Jesus says in Matthew 11 verse 28 to 30, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light." This is so beautiful because all he says is come to me. He invites us to come to Him, but many Christians don't. They just carry all these burdens and problems and you can see how they just go from one place to the other place with all these burdens and they don't bring it to God. But God promises us peace. He says in Philippians 4 verse 6 to 7, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So it's the peace of God that guards the hearts and the minds of Christians. And that is why you see those Christians that look so happy and peaceful all the time. What you're actually seeing is God's peace that surrounds them, that guards them. Because they continually talk to God and they fully trust Him with their lives. But there's also something else here. He says here in verse 6, be anxious for nothing. And Jesus also says this in Matthew 6 where he says, don't worry. But then why are so many Christians out there worrying and anxious and stressing about their lives? And this is very important, so listen up. It is because they have not yet reached the point where they have fully surrendered every single aspect of their lives to God. Many don't even know that they have to do it because they don't study God's Word and they just go and listen to preachers that don't even teach these deep truths of Scripture anymore. 
Old preachers like Billy Graham and even my dad used to preach about these things, about fully surrendering to God. And you could see how it changed people's lives. So what does it mean to fully surrender to God? Because that is the secret to true happiness, which is actually eternal peace. Well, let me explain it this way. First, when you become a true Christian, God opens up your spiritual eyes and you can understand spiritual things. And you believe in Him and you give your heart to Him and God justifies you. You become a Christian, a reborn Christian, and He gives you the Holy Spirit to come and help you and to guide you. But you still have a long road left on this earth, a road of sanctification. You're like a new spiritual baby, but the Holy Spirit helps you and guides you to grow spiritually and to become more Christ-minded and to live fully for God. Remember in the previous verse, Matthew 11, verse 28 to 30, after Jesus says that He will give us rest, what does He say? Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, and you will find rest for your souls. Now remember, I've said this in previous videos as well, but what is our soul? It is mainly our intellect, our emotions, and our own will. And so all those parts, our soul, need to come and rest in God. How and when does our soul come and rest in God? It usually happens after you became a Christian, after conversion. And I'm talking here about fully resting in God. And for many people, it's years after they became a Christian where they find this full rest in God. When you come to God for the first time to become a Christian, you find a certain amount of peace, some rest, but that rest is for salvation. And you have peace in Christ because you know you are saved. But Jesus says, take my yoke upon you. And that means to fully surrender to God's will and plan for your life. And Jesus showed us this by an example where He submitted to the Father's will in Luke 22 verse 42. And He said, Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. And now Jesus asks you the same thing, to fully surrender your life to God's will and plan for your life. This doesn't really have anything to do with going to heaven. This is about your life right here on earth that you still have left. It's your life before you go to heaven. So how do you do it? How do you fully surrender to God? Well, you go to Him and you talk with Him and you just pray, God, I want to fully surrender every aspect of my life to You. I want to walk in Your will. Reveal to me what is my purpose on earth while I'm still alive. What do you want me to do with my life? Because I trust your plan for my life because you know everything. You know better than I do and you know me better than I know myself. Fully surrendering your whole life to God is so important for spiritual growth. And you can clearly see the difference between people who are fully surrendered to God and to Christians who haven't done it yet. Christians who haven't fully surrendered to God's will in every aspect of their lives. Always have, in South Africa, we usually say, this guy has issues, always issues, or this girl always has issues. So Christians who have never fully surrendered to God always have issues. Then they have an issue of this thing, or that church, or this person, or this friend, or that brother, or there's always problems. They are never content with things as they are. But then something huge happens when that person fully surrenders to God's will. When that person takes the yoke of Jesus 100% on themselves and trust Him, it is then when your soul comes at rest at the feet of Jesus. And then your soul is not restless anymore, but it is calm and it waits on the Lord. Even in the Old Testament, we can see that some of the godly men knew this rest in God. Psalm 131 verse 1, Lord, my heart is not haughty, nor my eyes lofty. Verse 2, Surely I have calmed and quieted my soul, like a weaned child with his mother, like a weaned child is my soul within me. O Israel, hope in the Lord 
from this time forth and forever. So to take his yoke upon you, you move with him, he guides you, and you're asking God, reveal to me if there's anything here in my life that is not according to your will. Is there something that I haven't yet fully surrendered to you? This is not a passive decision. It is an active decision where you choose to follow God's will, where you move with Him and you wait upon Him for direction in your life. Of course, you still have your own will, but that will is now under the will of God. And if this happens, you feel free, you feel light, and you feel filled with God's peace and the Holy Spirit. And now He can fully use you as He wants to. And He knows exactly what you are capable of because He's the one that made you. He gave you the gift that you have to use for His glory. If you have not yet fully surrendered to God, you will not find that peace. You will not experience that full rest in your soul. Because you don't fully trust God with your life. You're not letting go of your burdens. Be honest with yourself. You know, people ask me on the other channel that I have, DLA Model Lifestyle, they ask me, Daniel, how do you handle stress? And how can I even start to try to explain to them that I don't experience stress the same way that they do? Because I trust God with my whole life. I have fully surrendered every single aspect of my life to Him. And even when I am supposed to have or feel stress, I don't because I have that 100% peace in my heart that comes from God and that peace surpasses all understanding. I can't even explain it myself. Fully surrendering to God changed my whole life and I know my identity in Christ and also my purpose in this world. Even two years ago when my, my father died to cancer, of course I was sad, you know, on an emotional level. But I still had peace in my heart because I know that God can see everything. He knows what He's doing. I trust in God's plan for my life. You know, I am at that stage of my life where I've realized that everything I need comes from God. And I'm content with whatever He brings on my path or whatever He gives me. I'm fully content. I don't carry heavy burdens because I fully trust in God's promises. God took away all those burdens I had. I am free, totally free. And it's interesting because the only desire I now have in my heart is to get to know Him more and fuller. I just want to know God. I want Him to reveal Himself to me more and more, to grow closer to Him. Do you have that desire in your heart? Do you want to know God fuller? Then go to Him and fully surrender every aspect of your life to Him and say, God, not my will be done, but Your will be done in my life. And sometimes there are one or two big things that a person wants to hold on to. It can be some kind of sin or it can be things like the decision of who you want to marry, where to live, what career you have. But you need to come to a point where you realize that God knows better than you. He can see the future because He doesn't live in time. He can see all the ripple effects of your decisions. And usually, if you move outside of the will of God, it never ends good. And then you pray again to God to help you in this situation that you have found yourself in. And He needs to come and repair the bad decisions that you've made because you chose to move outside of God's will. But you know, you can trust Him because He is gentle. He is lowly in heart. His yoke is easy and His burden is light. He will never take you through unnecessary hardship. And if He does allow certain hardships over your life, it's because He wants to teach you something. And if you go through that hardship, while you trust God, you will come out the other end stronger. Now, I want to invite you, in the name of Jesus Christ, to surrender every single aspect of your life to God and say, Not my will, but your will be done. Now remember, God loves you, and I love you too. Bye. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee.